Finding healthy balance between boundaries, raising bottoms, no entitlement, and just being a mom. Whoa. <laughs> That's a question right there. That's a question we could spend a whole meeting on. Yeah, go for it. This is a this is a tough question. Um, I think it's important to separate your emotions from it. I think that's that's really really important, and that's one thing that I like about the um, you know the the shots and consequences is that you can just you did this, so you know now this is going to happen. And I think um, if you can do your own work that's going to really help a lot of us come into recovery. And I did, I came into recovery, not as much into Cornerstone. I had done a lot of work around my kids, but really, really enmeshed. And um, just being a mom, what it looks like can be really distorted in our minds. It can, it can be really distorted, especially if we struggle with codependency and we're not healthy and boundaries can feel so unloving. Um, and so um, I think that work in your own program is the most important thing, reaching out to other people. Um, and you just really have to do the hard things. And so um, I think balance, I don't know, you may find yourself going from one extreme to another. I mean, I think balance comes in time. I don't think balance, that you just come in here balanced and knowing all of that. And I know one of the things that was really, really hard for me in the beginning of recovery because I was so controlling that I couldn't tell when am I being controlling and when am I showing up and setting a boundary. And um, I was super controlling and I had seen the effect that that had had on my kids. So I can relate to it being really confusing. And, and I did go from one extreme to the other. I was um, an authoritative parent when my kids were younger. And when I got into recovery, I'm like, oh my God, I was authoritative. I was so controlling. I didn't listen to them. It was just a hard line. And I saw the negativity that that caused. So then I went to the opposite extreme. And I can remember my first sponsor in Al-Anon, um, you know, my daughter was 21, so she's letting her drink upstairs. And my other daughter was there with somebody else underage. And she's like, is that okay with you? I'm like, no, that's not okay with me. But I was so confused at how do I, how do I, I realize that I've been so extreme this one way and it's really hurt my kids. And that hurt me to know that I had hurt them so much. But to go to that other extreme um, wasn't healthy either. And so it was my own growth when it could start becoming clear this is control this is a boundary um this is this is enmeshment this is not part of being a mom you know when we struggle with codependency what looks like um what feels like love what feels like just being a mom can be so off balance um at least that's just from my um personal experience and sometimes I even wonder now because I have done the work to go ahead and detach and not be as enmeshed and then sometimes I think should I be doing more? Should I be closer to them? My kids are all adults now and they have their own lives and I don't, um, I'm not really expecting anything from them. I, I'm having my own life and, and finding fulfillment and the things that I'm choosing. I'm not dependent on them before that, for that. So I just think, I don't know, this is a loaded question and I don't think that there's any easy or fast answers. And I would just say, you just dig in and you just work your own program as hard as you can. And, um, reach out to others when you're having trouble finding that balance and you're not there. And that's what I did. I can remember my counselor saying, it was gonna set a boundary with my ex and I just remember her. I said, but I feel like I'm being controlling. She said, Christy, this is not controlling. This is a safety issue. I'm like, oh, okay, it was just so confusing for me. So I would just say I depended so much on those around me that had walked the path before me until until the change was deeply in me and that, um, you know, in the promises it says we'll intuitively know how to handle situations that used to baffle us. And that promise really does come true, but it, but it doesn't happen overnight. And so um, I think working to detach from our kids, we have a lot of unhealthy attachments. For me, that was just a lot of lack of self where I was looking to them 
to fulfill me. And so really getting that separation, having my own life um, that fulfilled me outside of them, where I know that what they do or what they don't do is not a reflection on me or who I am. Um, and so anyway. Uh, you know, that was that was a great answer. That was I'm so glad we have that recorded. That was yeah. an incredible yeah. answer. Uh, the only thing that I would say, not even to add to that, but just to kind of put a, a, a bow on that, is that if you do all of those things and you are working really hard, that's going to put you in a position to where you can respond as opposed to react to your kid, which is going to prove to be much more effective. Uh, can I add just a little bit? Yeah, please. Um, you got more? That was awesome. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, like, this road is is really really hard and i would just encourage you to let yourself feel the grief that comes and all the emotions that come with it because there's no way around it's only through and it's going to suck and it's going to be hard and a lot of dark days but when you're willing to go through those and to feel it and to reach out for help you're going to come out on the other side and um with the serenity and the peace that we talk about. So just um, wanted to encourage y'all to not be afraid to cry and feel your feelings and really, really grieve these losses because there's a lot of loss here. And as parents, there's so much that we have to let go of, of dreams and expectations. And um, when we can truly let go of those things, that's when we can be there for our kids in the way that they need. And we're not expecting them to be there for what we need. I would, I would, yeah, I would drop this mic, but I want to treat Chris's equipment well. <laughs> yeah, embrace the suck. There's it's a, it's a lot of truth to that. And embracing the suck is all about understanding that this is going to be unpleasant, and it's going to be painful, and it's going to suck for a time, but that it's necessary and unavoidable if we're going to progress. If we're going to get better, we've, we've, we've got to go through this. You know, we're want to be ready for some short-term pain for what hopefully will be some long-term gain. That's such a great answer.